Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School's the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. We've been talking some about... Uh, the high priest, Melchizedek, and, and Jesus uh, is our high priest. And the Bible says that he, uh, he works with our words. He is the high priest of our confession. And that's why at the very beginning of the class, we start saying some things. Give the Lord something to work with. Now, if, you, if you're going to say, uh, I'm so weak, nothing ever works for me, uh, you know, bad things are going to happen. The Lord's not going to work with that. That's not what he said. You're not agreeing with him and he can't work with your words, but there is somebody else who can. The enemy of your soul. You know, if you want to, if you talk defeat and you talk failure and you talk fear and you talk confusion, death, then the enemy, the devil, his cohorts have a right to help to try to bring that to pass against you and in your life. It matters what you say, brother and sister. It really matters what you say. Think about how you get saved, how you get born again and, and go from being dead spiritually to alive, go from going to hell to going to heaven. How'd that happen? Romans 10 says you believe in your heart and what? You say with your mouth, you confess Jesus as Lord, and he works with your words. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. He's able to confirm what you chose to believe and declare. Well, that's not the last and only thing he can work with. We're not just supposed to get born again by faith. We're supposed to live by faith, function by faith every day. And so what you've got to do is retrain yourself Renew your mind because the tendency, especially in this ungodly world we live in, everybody is, else is, is doing the wrong thing. And so that seems natural and normal is when you feel bad, talk bad. When it looks bad, talk bad. Uh, you know, if, if other people are saying bad things are happening, join in with them. Yeah, it's so bad. Everything's so high. It's so crazy. There's just no way. All of this is going down. It's Well, then... You got the angels of the Lord that's supposed to help you. They just have to back up. They can't work with that. The Holy Spirit who's inside you, he just has to stay back. He can't, he can't work with that. Your high priest in heaven, he can't work with that. He told you what to say, but you won't even take the time to find out about it or read it or remember it or say it. But the enemy, he's thrilled about it. <laughs> he and his cohorts will jump on it and they will try to, they will, hey, they said it. They want it, and so they get to try to work to bring it to pass. I want you to make some changes right now. Say it out loud, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name I, negate I negate every negative thing, every negative thing. I, have I have spoken against myself. I'm saying no. I'm saying no. I, don't that. I don't believe that. I don't want that. I, want that. I, nullify, it. I nullify it in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And I'm saying, I'm saying God, is God is for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, blessing the blessing is on me. Favors around me. Favors around me. And, good things, and good things. Good things, good things, good things are happening for me. Happening and in my life. In my life. Today, today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Now see, that's an agreement with what God said. He can work with that. His angels can work with that. His spirit can work with that. Give God something he can work with. Yes. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Well, Father, we thank you so much. You're so good to us. 
Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for being long-suffering and bearing long with us uh, in times we didn't listen or ignored or, or played dumb or any of these things. Thank you. Thank you for being so patient, so merciful. But we purpose to, to lay all that aside and to focus on you and to follow you fully. Show us what we need to see and know that there may be a powerful renewing of our minds and understanding and a powerful receiving of the truth inside us and it expanding and growing and the truth making us free to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, look again, if you would, to uh, Genesis, the 14th chapter. We've been talking about 30 reasons why we are sure it is always God's will for us to have abundant provision. Our first reason was that the Lord is, is my shepherd and everyone that believes they're a shepherd. And then we talked about the goodness of God. And then we talked about the fatherhood of God. And then we talked about the creation of God. And then we talked about God's will in heaven. And more recently here, we've talked about the God of Abraham. And then we've talked about that we are the seed of Abraham. And so that's uh, seven reasons that we've already covered of the 30. Do you think there are 30 reasons in the scriptures? Yes. Oh, yeah, there's more than that. <laughs> We're not going to run out. <laughs> but uh, if you weren't with us. For these previous reasons, go online, faithschool.org, and they're all there uh, in different languages. And there's no charge, there's no cost, there's no commitment. Just watch them, listen to them, feed on them, and get rid of any question or doubt about God wanting to take care of you materially and financially. Get rid of it. Or elsewise, Remember what James said about somebody wavering? Maybe he will, maybe he won't. We just, the Bible said, don't let that man think he'll receive anything of the Lord. Why? It doesn't work. That's, that's unbelief. And the Lord's, he didn't like unbelief. Uh, he got irritated with the disciples about unbelief. So that's something, if that's how he feels about it, you should feel the same way. I should feel the same way. And that's why, you know, we spent months around here talking about unbelief, I, right? Identifying it and knowing what it is, how to avoid it, how to get rid of it. And that's also on the website. Uh, that's part of the, the Faith School series. So um, we're, we're down now to number eight in our reasons. And we're still looking at some things that happened with Abraham. You know, Abraham's held up in the New Testament as an example for us. And, and a father of faith to us. And we saw that uh, in Genesis 14, when God gave him that victory over the kings and his, his family lot and those guys and were all delivered and spared, that when he came back from the victory and with all this mass of people and livestock and treasure, that Melchizedek, the high priest of God met him. So they're coming into the area and toward the cities and Melchizedek went out to meet him and we know also that the king and officials of Sodom and those cities came out too. But, um, uh, and he wants to talk to Abraham and you know if you've read it then he's going to tell him, you know, just uh, keep all the stuff but uh, let the people come back to the city so he can be king over somebody again, you know. And, um, uh, but Abram made him wait. Why? Because the high priest of God was there. And, they, and he received him. But the high priest in verse 18, Genesis 14, 18, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Now, we touched on this in some previous lessons, but we're going to see it more and more as we go. Bless, blessing and blessed are not religious words to God. 
They are power words. They are creative words. They are empowering words. In the book of Genesis, when it describes creation, he would speak over what he had made, including man. And the scripture said he blessed them and said, be, you see that word frequently, be. That's a shortened version of become. That's a creative word. Hallelujah. Become fruitful and multiply and fill up the earth. Now that's not a pat on the back. Y'all do good now. (laughs) The reason I say this is because the devil hates blessing. Oh, he hates it. He can't stop it just by himself. He can try to get you to mess yourself up and disqualify yourself. But if he could stop God's blessing power, he could stop God. He can't do that. And and it's contrary to everything the devil is. The blessing brings life. Hallelujah. And light and goodness. Everything the enemy is not. And, and so the enemy has tried to confuse people about blessing, and he is the demeanor, he is the, the devaluer, the, uh, uh, you know, trying to diminish it always. And so you'll find a lot of church going people, uh, the biggest thing they know about blessing is to, what to say when somebody sneezes. <laughs> God bless you. And, and what did that mean? What did that accomplish? Are they releasing faith? For the sneezer to be empowered? No, it means nothing, which is exactly what the enemy wants. He wants that word to mean nothing to the church. And that's a sad reality if it does. No, it's one of the most powerful things there is. When God says, be blessed. That's something that goes through you on a cellular level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's something that changes you inside and out. It's something that immediately provides for expansion and multiplication and increase. Life itself. Can you say glory to God? Glory to God. So uh, Melchizedek didn't come to meet Abraham to say, good job. Mm -mm. Not read it. What happened? He brought forth bread and wine. What's that symbolic of? Communion. Right? The bread and the wine. The body and the blood. And Hebrews talks about that Jesus is our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And goes into detail about how that Melchizedek was not a high priest of the lineage of Aaron like what was established through Moses many, many years later. So we got high priest. We got tithing. We got blessing before there was any law. (laughs) But right before there was any uh, priesthood, any of that, before there was any tabernacle, before there was a temple, before there were any laws, any statutes, any of this. You got to remember, this is Genesis 14, right? This is way back in the back, (laughs) way back in the day. And uh, because God never changes, people change, human beings change, trends and fads come and go, not God. God has always been a God of blessing. Hallelujah. A God of honor. He's always been a God of tithes and offerings and first fruits. Always. And he's always been a God of protection. Hallelujah. Always. He'll never change. How many believe God is exactly the same God right now today as he was back here with Abraham? Is he the same? Hadn't changed at all. Why? He doesn't need to change. He's perfection. 
Right? Everything he said, everything he does was completely perfect and right when he said and did it. And so Melchizedek came and blessed him. And uh, verse 20, he continues to bless him. And blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram's response? Tithing. Tithing. Now, tithe literally means tenth. Tenth. The tenth part. And so he took the tenth part, or ten percent, of everything out there before (laughs) the accountants came. (laughs) Before... (laughs) Before the county guy assessors came, uh, before the IRS came, before anybody came. Because, see, all this is, is in their minds in limbo right now. Because we're talking whole cities of people and stuff and livestock and wealth that used to belong to the city of Sodom and these other places and all that. But these enemy folks came and they took it. They defeated them. They cleaned them out. They took it away. And usually that's the end of the story. It's gone. Right? Right. But not this time. God had a man, hallelujah, that would dare to believe him. And tell these guys, okay, guys, I know this is not what we normally do, (laughs) but uh, get your gear. If you need a sword, we'll get you one. (laughs) And they went, and God gave them a victory. And when Melchizedek met him, how many can see all of this is a a sign of putting God first, acknowledging God? Huh? Before people get embroiled into, you know, what really happened and, you know, because the, with the enemy, he's always be trying to explain things away. Mm-hmm. Right? Anything except give God the glory mm-hmm. and the credit. And, um, and people, not too long before they forget even why they have people back in the city. Mm-hmm. They just try to go back to the way it was. And Sodom was an ungodly place to start with. So, anyway... He come, Melchizedek comes out, bringing bread and wine. And Abraham recognizes who he is. And they stop, and Abraham has everybody stop. And they said, the king of Sodom is here to meet you. He said, well, he'll have to wait. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and Melchizedek is coming, and he said, "Everybody, everybody make way for God's high priest. Make way, make way. So he comes, and, and I mean, everything stops except this. And Melchizedek comes, and he, he brings out the bread, and he brings out the wine. This is covenant, covenant. Everybody knows this is covenant, covenant. What does he want to talk about? The blessings yes. Amen. and God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so he starts talking about God, and he said, blessed be Abraham. God has blessed Abraham. And what, what do you think Abraham's saying? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You got that right. God has blessed Abraham. He's blessed him with all this stuff. God, the possessor of heaven and earth, has blessed him. And God has given him this great victory over all these kings and all this stuff. And Abraham said, Amen. Amen. And all of Abraham's men said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and then he, uh, when he finished pronouncing the blessing, Abraham looked at them and said, tithing, tithing time, tithing. You go out, round up. I want ten, a tenth of every cow herd. I want a tenth of every sheep herd. I want a tenth of the camels and the horses and the mules and the donkeys. I want a tenth of the jewelry, a tenth of the gold. I want a tenth of the silver and the brass. I want a tenth of everything out here before anybody else gets involved. You separate a tenth of it out and send it with Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep reading. Verse 21, they said, well, you know, the king wants to see you. He said, well, all right, I'm done. He'd come. 
And he said to Abraham, give me the people and take the goods to yourself. We're talking millions worth of stuff. Abram said to the king of Sodom, I've lift up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Now hold on. That's what, just what Melchizedek just said. Right? That I will not take from a thread, even to a shoelace, I won't take anything that's yours. Lest you say, I have made Abram rich. Now, friend, this is a huge part of our witness. It's not just what you have. It's how you got it. Hmm? There's a right way and there's a wrong way. And he's saying, uh, I won't take anything through you. What's he say? We just got through honoring God and worshiping God and tithing. And acknowledging it was God that saved us. It was God that gave us the victory. And he's continuing with that theme. It's God who made Abraham rich. And nobody will ever be able to say anything different. Hmm? So no, I'm not going to take anything from you. Now these men that went with me, my neighbors, let them have something. But no, I'm not going to take anything from you. Lest you say, I have made Abraham rich. So uh, people try to say, well, you know, tithing's not for us today. And, well, is honor for us today? Yes. Is acknowledging God for us today? Yes. Does it matter how things come today? Yes. Whether God gets glory and credit or not? Yes. Then how do you separate it from this? Go with me, if you would, to uh, uh, Malachi, the third chapter. This is the very, you know, end of the, uh, the Old Testament. And you'll see a connection between these passages and Malachi and the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, 6 and 7 in the New Testament. But in Malachi 3, verse 6, the Lord said, I am the Lord, I change not. Should we pay attention to that? Yes. Now, one reason I'm reading this is because there's a lot of people say God has changed. Maybe they don't come out and say it exactly like that, but when you sum it up, he must have changed somewhere. Right? right. Mm -hmm. I, and so, you know, I'm, we're kind of old school, if you want to call it that. Uh, I still wear a tie when I preach on Sunday and and, and some of these things. And I've had people kind of say, well, Brother Keith, you know, times have changed. And other people say, well, you know, God don't care what you have on. I said, well, he used to. Yes, right. <laughs> he had special clothes made up for the priests and for the uh, Levites. And he, did, he only wanted them made in certain material. And, and, and he said, for beauty. And for glory. And he didn't want stuff that made them sweat. <laughs> Is that interesting? Uh, well, when did he change? Huh? When, when did he change to the point where he said, you know, you know, T-shirt with holes, that's fine. That's, that's okay. And there's a thing about, you know, okay, if you want to cut your grass in your cutoffs with holes, that's one thing. But shouldn't you use your better stuff? When you come before the Lord, yes. why wouldn't you make an extra effort, right? Now, I'm not talking about, I realize that, you know, not everybody has money right now to get certain kind of clothes. We're not talking about that. And some of this, you know, coat and tie, that's Western. You know, people dress differently in different parts of the world. I'm not saying coat and tie or dress. I'm saying your best, right? Yes. If you got three T-shirts and two pairs of jeans, comes time to go to church, help me out. Get your good ones. Is that right? Get your good ones. Wouldn't hurt you to break the iron out. Right? <laughs> break the iron out. Press up the good t-shirt. Why? Because you're not going out to the backyard for a picnic. Right? You're coming before the Lord. You're going to stand up and sing praise and hallelujah. Hopefully bring an offering, right? right? You're going to come before the Word of God and respect it and receive. 
There should be efforts. And see, that's what was going on here when, when the high priest pronounced blessing on Abraham and his people. I mean, there's no discussion. There was no request. Melchizedek didn't ask for anything. When he finished pronouncing this blessing, what, what happened? I mean, the, the verse ain't even over. Abraham says, tithing, tithing. I want a tenth of everything out here, and I want it to go with Melchizedek. No rules. Nobody's asking. Where did he get that? Where did he get that? Why not 5%? Why not 15 where did he get 10? <laughs> well, same place he got, uh, you know, being called righteous because of his faith, right? Same place he got, your seed will be like the sand on the seashore and the stars in the sky. He had a personal relationship with God, right? And through revelation, he got it. And so is that, has God changed today? He starts out by saying, I am the Lord. I change not. And for the, the very next verse, uh, he talks about tithing. Now, we're going to get into this in, in a later class here. But uh, in the talking about tithing, he begins by saying, I don't change. Can you see that? Yes. And I don't think any intelligent thinking Christian would say that honoring God is no longer applies. Or acknowledging God no longer applies. Or that you should put for God first in your finances and things. Well, how much? Does anything belong to God? Is there any portion? Actually, it's always been ten. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's always been tenth. And you know, uh, the IRS likes more than ten. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sometimes way more than ten. And so... Are, do we support our national government more than the kingdom, more than the gospel, more than the things of God? Do we do less under this new and better covenant than they did under the old covenant? I think not. And like I said, I wouldn't you know, argue with you personally about it, but I know what has happened for us. And what we're saying is, if, he, if the blessing of tithing ensures this protection and provision, that's one of the reasons why we're sure it's always God's will for us to have abundance. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Well, time's up again today. Say it like we do sometimes. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I am strong in faith giving glory to God. We'll see you soon back here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390. 